Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to our University Apiary where today we need to take a look uh, and in fact a close look at one of the colonies that we've got here because it has developed a viral infection called chronic bee paralysis virus. I spotted it a few weeks ago just on one or two bees but now it seems to be spreading through the colony. And I thought rather than just destroying them, it would give us a good opportunity to show you what chronic bee paralysis virus is, how it affects the bees, and some of the signs and symptoms that the, uh, that the bees show so that when you possibly get an infection in one of your colonies, you can more easily identify it. It can be mistaken for uh, maybe a poisoning event. So, one of the things that you'll see is a, uh, a mound of bees on the floor outside the hive. And if you live near farmland or you've seen someone spraying some crops, then you could mistakenly believe that the bees have been poisoned. Obviously that does happen occasionally, uh, but purely accidentally. Here, unfortunately, it's not poisoning. It's this viral infection which has hit the bees. So I'm going to get my bee suit on, we've got the smoker lit and we'll go over to the colony and we'll take a close look at both the, uh, the hive and also the bees that have been affected. So this is the colony in question and you can see under the stand we have a large pile of dead and dying bees and it's a really sad sight to see. But this is typical of a colony that is dying out of chronic bee paralysis virus. If we zoom in, you can see the effects on some of the bees, which will now be wandering around. Some of them shaking, but generally most of them have now died out. And as I say, it's a really sad sight to see. So chronic bee paralysis virus is known as a RNA single strand virus. Those are the technical terms for it. It doesn't really matter as far as the practical side of beekeeping is concerned. Uh, it just identifies it in terms of where it fits in with other viruses, I guess. So the bees develop two types of symptom or syndromes as type 1 syndrome and type 2 syndrome and these uh, show to the beekeeper two different faces of chronic bee paralysis virus. So that's the first thing that you see when you approach the hive you look down and there's a large mound of bees outside the hive uh, probably two to three weeks ago there wasn't anywhere near the number of dead bees outside the hive. And this is partly down to bees dying and uh, being outside the hive when they die, but uh, a lot of it is the healthy workers pushing bees out, dragging out dead bees. And of course, being in such close proximity, it's just going to help move the virus around. So we'll open up the hive and as we go through, I'll explain a little bit more about the virus itself, how it's transmitted, and um, what we can do to try and help the bees uh, mitigate that um, particular problem. So here you can see one of the affected bees showing the signs and symptoms. It's actually become very dark, hairless, almost wet looking, a very dark abdomen, but it's lost all of the hairs off its abdomen. And unfortunately, that's showing all the uh, visual signs and symptoms of chronic bee paralysis virus. The honeybees can suffer from a range of different viruses. I think there's about a dozen different types. Uh, and this is one that we actually know very little about. And here we have another one. And you can see that it's lost all of its 
hairs on the back of its abdomen. So type 1 syndrome is where the bees have this abnormal trembling motion and it's the wings and the body that, and you can see on some of these bees where they are trembling, the, the bodies are trembling and the wings are trembling and it's almost all the way across this particular colony. The type 2 syndrome is, I don't know that they are stage 1 or stage 2 but Type 2 is where the body becomes hairless, they appear really dark, so if you've got dark bees they will almost appear black and they get this greasy appearance when the sun's on them and what will happen is that some of the healthy bees will then start to pick on those hairless bees and uh, start nibbling at them and we'll see if we can find uh, some of the bees doing that to, to demonstrate it. And so here you can see one of the hairless black bees being well, almost attacked by its fellow workers. And now it seems to be being left alone again. And so these are the two different visual symptoms that you can see. We'll pan back and show you the whole of the top of this brood box because the trembling motion that you can see on these bees is really marked and uh, is, is not difficult to uh, mistake for something else. It, it's so obviously something not right in this colony. So I'm just going to carry out an inspection. Uh, these bees have been uh, through a spring cleaning process. So we removed the floor, the brood box and the crime board in the spring in order to try and mitigate against just this kind of problem. Uh, but unfortunately, um, it, it's just something that pops up through no real apparent uh, cause. There seemed to be no exact reason for why the bees suddenly contract it. And in this apiary, this is the only colony that is showing these. There's another one here, a really hairless looking bee. Um, this is the only colony that has suffered this chronic bee paralysis virus. And I really don't know what to do next because part of me wants to uh, destroy the colony so that they don't infect the rest of the apiary. I know that um, in, in reading about it, uh, the way that it appears to be transmitted through the colony is by bees coming into close contact with each other. Well, to be honest, that's just isn't that just natural bee behaviour? The bees 
okay in this colony are not congested at all. They've not swarmed. They have a super on. And this isn't a congested colony. This is just a standard, fairly healthy looking colony in terms of bee numbers. But they have chronic bee paralysis virus and it is sweeping through the entire colony. And it's really distressing to see because I don't want the rest of my colonies to contract this disease. But at the same time, I would like to be able to treat them with something, but we, we don't have anything that I'm aware of that is going to be effective against this virus. And of course, you know, if you place yourself on a, I don't know, maybe on the London underground uh, in a tube, and somebody there has a winter virus and they're coughing and spluttering, you know that within a couple of days, because you're in a confined space, that the chances are you're gonna start coughing and spluttering. And there's nothing that you can really take for it, apart from just maybe putting some honey in some lemon water and trying to, uh, to ride it out. But I just don't think that these bees are going to survive this infection. Another thing to mention is that in this apiary, we've almost 20 colonies. Uh, we don't place our colonies in a straight line. The entrances are all staggered in different directions. They all face uh, completely different directions. So the chances of the bees drifting is fairly remote. I think the closest the colonies are to each other is probably 10 feet. Uh, maybe three meters, something of that order. And so they're not on top of each other, which is where you might expect drifting to occur. But as I mentioned earlier, this appears to be the only colony at the moment that has chronic bee paralysis virus. And it does seem to affect the really strong colonies. If it weren't for the CBPV, you would think that this was a fairly healthy colony. Um, brood in all stages, the queen's laying well. They're working in the super, they've got stores that they're putting away in the super. And apart from this terrible viral infection, everything in here would otherwise be okay. I haven't seen the queen, but there are eggs here, so she's still laying, uh, which makes it even worse, really. So we need to maybe seek further advice, do some more reading, and try and decide what we're going to do with this colony. So, as I said earlier, it's really distressing to see an otherwise healthy colony suddenly descend into this position where really it doesn't look as if there's any way back from it. In terms of apiary hygiene, I wash my hive tools in between each hive inspection. I wear blue nitrile gloves, which I wash between each hive inspection. My bee suits are washed uh, pretty much every evening after inspections. And I just don't know how that 
virus is getting into these colonies, uh, one colony here could become all of them. I don't know whether I should move it to a location that's isolated from all of the others. I don't know whether I should move all of the others away to an isolation apiary. Uh, currently I don't have an isolation apiary, so that answers that question really. Um, but it is quite a frightening sight when you don't know what to do as a beekeeper to try and help your bees uh, become healthy again. We do have some people that are now starting to work on this problem. Uh, here in the UK there is a chronic bee paralysis consortium that has been set up by Giles Budge at Newcastle University. They are investigating, I guess, all aspects of chronic bee paralysis virus and uh, in a recent article that I read in our uh, National Bee Farmer magazine, it appears that they're looking for people to get in touch if they have this particular problem. So if you're in the UK and you've got chronic bee paralysis virus, then um, take a look in the description below and I'll put their email address so that you can send off an email to them. In terms of the time frame for this particular hive, I first noticed uh, one or two bees with maybe type two syndrome. So that's the hairless, black, greasy looking bees, probably early to mid May. So around maybe the uh, 10th of May. Uh, we then spotted it again on the 21st, 22nd of May. We held a queen rearing session here uh, and it was spotted then in the same hive. And it's now the 22nd of June. So within 30 days or so, 40 days, we've gone from just one or two bees having uh, the signs and symptoms to the whole colony pretty much on the verge of collapsing. I would love to have any of your comments. Please do put them in the comments section below this video. Uh, I'd love to hear from you if you've suffered this problem, if you've found a way of uh, helping your bees, if you decided that you had to destroy your bees. Uh, worryingly for people who have only got one or two beehives, this could wipe out your entire stocks. I consider myself very fortunate to have lots of bee stocks that I can obviously create replacement colonies from. Um, so it is a worry. It does appear to be getting uh, more prevalent. Uh, and we wait to see what the scientific community can come up with by way of not just identifying it, because I think that's been well documented, but practical steps that we as beekeepers can take to prevent or reduce the effect of this disease on our colonies and on our apiaries. If you'd like to help me continue to produce this level of content, then please do take a look at my Patreon page. It's a page where you can help support me produce lots more quality content and in return have access to specific rewards for the level of support that you give. We're also on social media, so hook up on Instagram and Twitter, and we also have a Facebook group called Stuart's Beekeeping Basics. I will post a follow-up video to show what we've done with this particular colony, and hopefully we'll have a positive outcome, but at the moment things aren't looking great. Uh, we now need to go off and wash our hive tools and gloves and carry on with some inspections, but we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.